An important class of functions are called sinusoidal functions. They are of the following form. They look like y is equal to some constant times the sine of bx plus c and possibly plus a, a constant d. These constants a, b, and c, and d change the shape or not so much the shape but the positioning of y is equal to the sine of x. It still has the shape of a sine. It's still just that very, very periodic shape, uh, but it changes the, the, uh, the general positioning of things, and we need to understand how those positionings are, are changed. Uh, previously, we had seen a, a we have a, another video about that. Let me just kind of run part of that video and, and talk about it. Here, here this app is, is uh, building an angle here, so we can take this slider and, and change it. Notice that as that angle changes from zero up to almost six, that it graphs this particular curve. Now along this x-axis, we're, we're measuring that angle, okay? Uh, and it has this particular characteristic shape. I'll reproduce that shape here uh, in our drawing. Let me see if I can't recover that. Okay. So here's our setting. Y is equal to the sine of X has this particular shape. You should have it memorized. When X is zero, this thing starts out at zero. When it gets around to pi, pi is a little bit more than 3, 3.14 or so. Then it's back at 0 again, halfway between there, so that would be at about 1.6 something. It gets up to 1. And then halfway between pi and 2 pi, it gets down to, uh, uh, to a negative 1. So it has this characteristic shape. It's going up and then down to 0 and then down to minus 1 and then back up. And then it just starts doing that same thing again. So it's down to a minus 1 back up here. Okay, now this part from, from here around until it gets back to... It's going through 0 right there. To here. That's a... That's sometimes... That, that is a period of this thing. And we, we define the period as how far that is. So the period of the sine of x is really 2 pi. It starts at 0 and then it, then it's, uh, it ends at 2 pi and really kind of starts itself over again at that particular point. So what we want to know is, is what, these, what this a, b, c, and d do to, to reach repositioning this particular curve. Well, the A just stretches this thing in the up-down uh, direction. If, if A was 7, for example, then over here at pi over 2, this would end up being at a positive 7. All the zeros would still be at 0, and this would be down at a negative 7. If A was some negative amount, like negative 9, then here when this ends up being 1, this would be up at a, a down at a negative 9. And when this was at, uh, when this used to give a minus 1, then this would be up at a positive 9. So this A value, in a sense, gives the, what is called the amplitude, but it's really the absolute value of A that is called the amplitude. So if A is a negative amount, it's, it's still stretching things by that absolute value. That's, that's called the amplitude. Let's use the handwriting there. That's the amplitude. The absolute value of A is the amplitude. Now let's look and see what these other things do. This sign here will at some time be looking at some value that is zero. That's where it's going to think that it's starting at. So we're very interested in knowing when is bx 
plus C equal to zero. The reason that that's important to us is because this sign will be seen a zero and will therefore be be starting this particular graph at that point. That's easy to solve for. X is going to be, we'll just subtract an a C from both sides and divide both sides by B. So that's a minus C over B. And that's called the phase shift. Okay, the reason why is, is that's how much this picture gets shifted. And so this would be shifted to a minus C over B. That's where it would begin to, to see its starting value at. Now another important calculation is this one. When does BX plus C, in other words, when does the sine up in this particular equation equal to pi. When does the sine think that it's coming to the end of its first period? Well, that's an easy calculation. We'll subtract a C from both sides and divide everything by B. So X will be equal to a 2 pi minus C and all of that divided by B. Now that's where the sign thinks the end of its first cycle is. So we could find the length of its period by taking that ending where the sign thinks things end at minus where it thought things started at. And that's a very easy calculation because uh, this will just be a 2 pi on top minus a C and then plus a C all divided by a B and those C's cancel so this is going to be its period the length of its period is going to be 2 pi divided by whatever B is Now those observations make this particular problem very, very easy to do. The amplitude is going to be the absolute value of that A value. So it's going to be the square root of 18. Shoot. The phase shift is going to be where the sine sees a zero. So it's going to be this amount, solve that amount for equal to zero and find out what the x is. And that's easy to find because it's going to be a minus four times uh, e raised to the second power divided by the five pi times pi. Now this part right here is going to be the ending value minus the starting value but what we noticed in our calculations was that that's the always really it just always turns out to be uh, 2 pi divided by whatever the b value is and the b value here is going to be 5 times pi. Okay and we can check our answers. And, of course, those are all correct. All right, hope that helps.